Hi, my name is Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to take a departure from my other videos. This one's going to be more of an informational slash tutorial kind of video. And what I really want to do is talk about some low voltage repairs that you might encounter inside of a, you know, inside of an old vehicle or something like that. I'm, I'm really looking for low voltage, you know, direct wire connection. So it's either going to be a current connection or it's going to be a, basically a solder connection. So. Give you a little background for information so what i'm doing is in a previous video i was working on my jeep i have a 1988 yj wrangler and it's got the carbureted engine and I, so it's got a lot of it needs a little low so i've been working on it and one thing i've noticed is as i was putting reconnecting uh many of the electrical connections is that the outer jacketing of a lot of these these wires were starting to just come apart so i, was, I just in the video said hey i'm gonna just fix this in another video uh, I just figured I'd throw it in to be a, maybe a 30 second or less kind of part of a video. And the other night I was thinking this probably warrants maybe a video dedicated to itself about discussing, you know, the different types of solder points. Not everybody is, you know, very used to soldering. Some people probably, this is not their forte, maybe haven't ever done it before. So uh, I think I'm just going to reorient this and then I'll describe all the tools. I'll put a little display here and I'll go over all the different tools and aspects, why you want to use them and what their purpose might be. What so. I'm going to use for this demonstration is I'm just going to use some 16 gauge white jacketed, this PVC jacketed uh, wire. I do have some, I like dressing out, makes it, it makes it look a little bit more professional. This is uh, anti-chafe braiding. I get this from uh, McMaster Car. This is, uh, they call it clean cut. And then I also have some of this I've got from McMaster Car. It's got a white tracer on there and all that is, it means it's flame retardant. Uh, I have the crimpers, which they kind of go with the, you know, of course, with the different really, crimps. They, they make it nice. I prefer these just because, you know, it crimps, it crimps, it has two crimps. It crimps here on the front portion. It also puts a little indicator on here to tell you what gauge it's on there. Not that it really matters. Uh, it probably does for somebody that's doing this professionally and need an inspection. But uh, what this does, this part crimps the actual metal inside the, uh, the jacket, and this actually just kind of presses the jacket around on the outside, which is the back side of it. I have these, I use these. These are usually, usually in my tool bag when I go on the trail. Uh, these usually stay at home, but I've had these forever. As you can tell, they're, they're the Radio Shack special. Uh, and then I have these just floating around. I, don't, I prefer not to have these because they tend to just stay open in my tool bag and tend to want to find my finger, which that is not fun. These are dedicated just for the house. Uh, these are strippers. These I like these strippers because uh, you just put your wire in there and they they just pop it right off. It, no work from you. And you, if you have to do a lot, that's that's really the real the so, nice way to do it. Uh, I'll expound upon a little bit more about uh, the soldering iron versus the you know ones that you pick up you know that you just plug straight in a wall and you know you got to rest on a cup or something like that. Uh, I like this one only because you know a is because you can control the temperature, but mainly the tips are a whole lot nicer. Uh, if you look at this tip, see if you can, hopefully it zooms in, uh, but that tip is very silver. Uh, what you usually do is you get it to temperature and then you can just put a little solder on it like that and it should be really bright silver. Not that, it probably didn't change much because I've been doing this a couple times, you know, wiping the tip. Um, and it works really good to keep that tip nice and clean and bright because it does a lot better job of transferring the, uh, the 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 heat to whatever piece you're working on so as an example let's just grab a piece of this that it basically says what your gauge of the material is you put it in it crimps and basically it cuts opens and then basically allows you to fall out so that works really nice you don't have to have that but i like it because if i'm doing a lot of connections it makes my life a little bit nicer uh, if you don't have a stand or anything it makes it kind of convenient here it's just do it like that, whether no matter the length of the cable, wrap around something so it won't pull your, your work piece off. And that makes a nice little stand to kick your piece up so you can get you can work on it. I've got a vice, but you know, for this demonstration, this is what most people are gonna have. They're just gonna have a pair of you know, uh, cutters, things like that. And it works with any kind of cutters you have. Uh, so what's the process? Process is, is heat up your copper so that when you touch the, the solder to it, it wants to flow in into there because this is flux core. Just like a lot of my welding, this is also flux core. Uh, and what it does is that flux will clean it, uh, clean that copper off. There's a little bit of corrosion, you know, surface corrosion, all that. You can't really see, but there is some in there. It cleans it, and then it just basically, the solder adheres to it really good. So the way I do is I cheat a little bit. I melt down a small amount of solder uh, onto the tip. You don't want to have much on the tip. Uh, and then as you kind of start heating it up, it wants to bond a lot more, and then it just kind of flows into, the, uh, into your piece. And then what I usually do is I'll run it back up and down. Uh, and what that does it kind of keeps that heat along the uh, the copper and wants to make it want to bond better. So, 
And at this point, it is tinned. So now you have a tinned piece of, uh, of uh, basically, your wire, whatever you're working on, it's tinned. And at this point, you can then bond it to another piece of uh, solder and it goes really fast. If you tried to make the, do the copper first and then put the solder on there, sometimes you have issues with getting you know, cold welds and things like this where you won't have a, a, a cold weld, a cold solder joint where basically it looks like it's, it's soldered, but it's not actually soldered. Uh, I get welding, so <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm gonna cut it off another piece and then you'll be able to see how I, uh, you know, I can put different ways of doing different configurations of soldering. So I'm gonna make a couple more pieces of this. All right, so I have, I have four wires here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder two of these, you know, make them into one wire, basically doing, trying to do some kind of butt splice. So there's two different types you can do. It's not super hot. So what I, there's two different types. So if you, if you know it's gonna be getting some tension or getting pulled on, what sometimes you can do, and one of the tricks you can do is basically put a little hook on two of the ends, like that. I just take these small needle nose pliers and they make it really nice. And I put two, make the two little hooks on them like this, and then you just clip them together like that. Um, pull them together so they're like that and then what I'll do is I'll actually kind of come in here with these guys and I will uh, Pinch them down a little bit so that they don't want to move around on me That's one type and then I'll show you the, the other one basically is an overlap So this is a more of a hook style and the other one's an overlap so good part of this is I don't want to Burn anything so I'm gonna connect it like this The good thing is so when I go to just add it just a small bit of solder whatever solders on the on either one of these hooks It's gonna kind of go together so you go through there and you can do this. Take a second because they're fairly, just like that, it's done. Oh, and wet. It wets around either, either of them. And basically they're, they've got a good bond and good bond in there. There's no cold solders. You can kind of see how they kind of hold each other. And you can put a lot of tension, you know, in a lateral tension like that and they'll hold really tight. The ones I, pref I typically do because, you know, you see this, you have a big knot on it and the problem is there's sharp edges there even with heat shrink on there that's a catch point and something if they keep pushing something keeps pushing on there it might cut through and cause a short i prefer to use basically an more of an overlap style and this one's a little bit more of a pain i'll show you my trick to doing this i put a little bit of like a small dollop of solder on one and what i do is i'll wet one and i'll get it pretty moist pretty uh flows pretty good and then i'll just have it touch the other one to heat the, uh, both of them up like that. We'll give it a second. It'll solidify. Those guys, they are they wet pretty good, and it, they don't have the high uh, solder points either. So they've got a pretty good point. And, you know, I could probably put a little bit more there if I wanted to. But at this point, it's ready. Just put some heat shrink on top of that. So the, those are the two that I typically use when I'm uh, doing any kind of connections inside of a you know an engine compartment. Here's the uh, two types of. Heat, well, not two types of heat shrink. There's the heat shrink over the two types of soldering ones that I've done. This is the one where I did the overlap, basically the, the lap joint, as it were. And it does pretty good. It's a very low profile. Doesn't tend, it won't catch on much because they're almost the same diameter as the jacketing the in it. So. Is if you do have a cold solder joint, if there's a, an issue, it'll snap and pull apart. There's no way for them to stay together because it's just a lap joint. Uh, this one uh, is the one with the, uh, the two hooks that I put together. They, uh, they do a lot better if you have a cold solder joint because they are two hooks, they, do, they are more structurally sound because it is even if you've done a good job of, of uh, wetting these really good and tinning those really good, they'll hold together. Crimp styles that you can do. So, you know, let's just take this uh, spade terminal, for example, go with you on the back side of it or on the front side, whatever way you want to call it. You have the blue dots, match up the coloring on the, uh, the insulator, do that. And then you'll put them in here. You'll notice that one side of the crimp has a smaller diameter than the other side. The smaller diameter is gonna go more toward the front because you want to crimp the metal. Uh, the other side kind of backs off because it has it gives it a more of an accommodation for the jacketing, which is a little yeah, Like I said, they had that die in there. So when you crimp it, it actually shows it's been crimped properly. I don't know if you can see it good. It actually puts a little, two little dots in there. So, but anyway, that's you good. can use these where you go in and you just you know find the 16 to you know, 10 gauge, insulated, non-insulated, and you just plug them in there. And then at this, these style, you you will make sure that, so these are rolled, this connector is rolled, so I don't know if you can see that. Basically, well. the way these are created, there's a roll on these. So you see that split there? That's where they're rolled together. When you go to crimp, you don't want the this to be on that side. You don't want to put that crimp seam on that the, the, uh, the point, because what'll happen is sometimes it'll just push down. You want to put it the other way around, so it, it, when it goes to crimp, it rolls those two pieces together and you have more of a solid piece. So you want to have that in that kind of configuration. 
So when you go to crimp, I'll go ahead and waste this one. When you go to crimp, it won't, it'll kind of push those and hold those together. If you do it the other way, sometimes it might open them up and then it won't, it won't bite as good. A solder. So get the end of the solder. So for example, you can always take this jacket and you can just twist it, it comes right off. So how to pull the other one off. If you, if you have the desire to do so, you can do the same thing as you did before. You can actually solder to this as well. You know, have your connections. Just do the same thing, you wet, and what I usually do is you'll see it kind of wanting to, to uh, wet onto the material. I don't know how clearly you can see this, I'll show you in a second. And it'll want to run once it starts. There, you'll see it. It'll... And the good news is you can always, if you if you have an exposed end like this, you can put it up on there and then it looks really nice because then you can, I'm not going to grab that what's 700 degrees of course. You can push that guy back on there. And then basically, you know, it looks real pretty. All right, so we're at the point of the video where I'm gonna tell you whether the soldering's better or whether the crimp's better. Uh, and really, it's it depends on the application, right? So if I'm on the trail, I'm gonna have this and this in my trail bag, and that's all I'll have. I'm not gonna have any other crimp connections, and <clears throat> it'll have, you know, if I need to get back on and get back home. I can just cut the wire, strip it back, twist them together, put some electrical tape, it'll get me back home. If it's a something I'm taking on and off a lot of times, well, you're gonna have to put some kind of quick disconnect in there. And I'll put, and I'll basically put in a quick disconnect and I'll crimp them on. And what I'll probably do is uh, crimp them and maybe even solder them, but usually it's a solder point. So I prefer, I lean more heavily on the solder, but the crimp definitely have its place. And I use it a lot, especially if I, but if I'm trying to make a fast project and I don't want to spend a lot of time, then I'll just crimp on the connections. They're just as good. And if you have concerns about corrosion or things like that, you put a small little dollop on the uh, inside of the, the ferrule before you crimp it of uh, silicone grease. That usually does pretty good. Uh, no ox is usually for the bigger items, such as like battery cable terminals, things like that. Um, so it just depends on your application. Uh, so I lean more, like my Jeep's sitting here, I'll lean more on the solder and do a lot more solder and grist out the cables really nice. Give myself the links that I need. So that, that'll be more what I lean to. Uh, that's really all I wanted to cover in this video. You've seen the tools, you've seen the processes. Hopefully it give you a little bit of understanding of how to do this. Don't worry if you get cold solder joints, just do it again. It's not a big deal. You can just, you know, put more solder on it. If you feel you've got too much, you can actually heat up the solder, knock it. It'll usually just pop right off and you just kind of flow right off. So you don't have to worry about it too bad. You can do it over and over. Worst case scenario, cut it off, make it a little longer. I mean, cut it off and, you know, strip it back and do it over again. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time, mainly because when I was 10 years old, you know, had a soldering iron in the basement and started playing with it. So I was able to, I've got a lot of experience doing it, so I have pretty good ability to know whether or not it's a cold solder joint or not. So other than that, that's really all I have in this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give me a like, hit the subscribe button so you can keep getting these videos. All right.